The abortion of a soul is the abortion of her destiny and her divine plan. It is the abortion of an individual calling from God. For our Father Mother God chooses the very special moment in history for each soul to return to earth to take part in the divine plan of the decades and the centuries. When we abort life in the womb, we are aborting the opportunity of a soul whose timetable has come to be on earth at that precise astrological moment. The timetables of the conception and birth of every child are directed by Almighty God, by the archangels and cosmic beings of light, and the specific ascended masters who are the sponsors of that soul, the godparents, if you will. These timetables are part of God's grand design of life. Think how wondrously you were made, how God cared for you personally, how your own father, mother ordained your conception, your parents, your life, your purpose, your reason for being, carefully oversaw the nurturing of you in the womb, and you were born at that precise moment. No one is an unwanted child. Though parents may think they don't want the child, it is the true God parents who have wanted you and ordained you. Therefore, I say to all, be healed of the burden that you may have been the unwanted child. For your father, mother, God loved you in the beginning, has loved you through the burdens of such associations, and will love you all the way through to your victory, home to his heart. Not one birth has ever taken place upon this planet that was not sanctioned by Almighty God and the Holy Spirit. No matter how hard you may try to conceive a child, unless it is the will of God and the timing of God, that child will not be conceived. The moment of conception is the moment of the ordaining of life by the Holy Spirit. Even before a child is conceived in the womb, the divine plan of a soul has been worked out in intricate detail. The grand design of God is so exact that at the moment of conception, the genes in that tiny embryo are already suited to the specific soul who will inhabit it. Before conception ever takes place, a board of spiritual overseers called the karmic board, together with the Holy Christ self of the soul, determines when and where and under what circumstances the soul will embody. These circumstances are tailored to the soul's needs in order to give her the best opportunity to work out her karma. The law of karma is inseparable from life upon earth. It implies reincarnation, even as reincarnation implies karma. Karma, the karma each of us carries with us, contains positive and negative momentums. Momentums we have set in motion by our free will, by actions, by words, by deeds, by thoughts, by feelings, as well as by sins of omission, inaction, not speaking out when we should, not taking action, but simply sitting back and being an observer, taking life as a spectator sport. Karma is reaping what we have sown yesterday, five minutes ago, and 10,000 years ago. As God has ordained the cycles and laws of his universe, it works out that many of us do not reap in a given lifetime what we have sown in that life. We don't know if it will take a thousand or twelve thousand years for that energy, those actions, to come full circle to demand that we make them right. But God knows, and his law is unerring and unfailing and always just. And therefore, if we do the tasks of the day, perform the services, and take our responsibilities each day of our life, doing all we can do to help others, 
as well as to inject into the society gifts we can give, something we can offer of our creation, from our profession, from our learning. That is sowing good karma as well as balancing bad karma. Free will, therefore, cannot be absolute or omnipotent because in the exercise of free will, we have ordained what must come next in our life, whether blessing or bane, according to how we have sown. You would have to not be an observer of life at all to have failed to have seen that this law of karma is always acting in your life. The preceding lecture was given by Elizabeth Clare Prophet, world-renowned author and spiritual teacher. The Summit Lighthouse is an international spiritual organization dedicated to universal enlightenment. Founded in 1958, the Summit Lighthouse has been a beacon of truth to thousands worldwide and a leader in New Thought spirituality. The preceding program has been brought to you by the Summit Lighthouse. For more information, call 1-800-245-5445 or visit our website at www.tsl.org. Outside the USA, call 406-848-9500 or write to the Summit Lighthouse, 63 Summit Way, Gardner, Montana, 59030, USA.